Okay. <clears throat> so here's we're looking at matrix to maps. Um, for every matrix, we have a map. So here's the matrix. Now we can have various maps depending on the basis. Like let's say we have this is the matrix M that's going to correspond to some map between R2C to R2C because I, I can I, this can multiply two by one vectors of with two components and the outcome will be a vector of two components. So what is so what is so just filling out um, what the what the um, well let me write this separately. So task one we're going to find the general formula. Okay. So what you do to find the general formula for the map would be to put in an arbitrary vector x, y, and then just carry out the matrix multiplication, which would be x plus 2y, 1x plus 2y, second row is 3x plus 4y. There you are. Okay, so then m is just the map that carries x, y to x plus 2y, 3x plus 4y. So that's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, the, the, you, you can just multiply in a spectrum and you get the general map and you might want to write it at, in this form, okay? Now, you could also get the basis action if you needed it. Okay, well that would just be taking this form for the for some basis. For example, let's say that we had uh, now this is essentially on a standard basis, say. I mean we're sort of thinking of this in one basis, so, so and then we could think, well let's say relative to that we want to use for the domain. Let's say we want to use for both Let's say we want to use so the, 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 base, the bases for both the domain and the codomain. Um, let's see, let's call this 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Okay, so then we might, we might want to know the basis action. What is the action of this? map or matrix on this basis. Well, we can do it two ways. We can either do the matrix multiplication again, or we can just say, well, we know that one, one, x and y is 1, so the image of 1, 1 will be um, 3, 1 plus 2, and then this will be 3 plus 4 is 7, and then the image of 1 Minus one, because we want to know the, the, the action of the map or the matrix on the um, both basis vectors. Well, since x is one and y is minus one, this is going to be one minus two is minus one, it will be three minus four is minus one. So there's the basis action. Now, the interesting thing is that. Um, if we, we, if since we have a basis action, we could. This is in this, this because our map is given here. Sort of, we don't write it. It's sort of by default in the standard basis, right? Everything we've been doing so far has always been in the standard basis. So this this assumption here, this was taking us from standard basis to standard basis. That, without any, if we just do it by default, then that's what we're thinking, okay? Now, if I have this, well, this is in, this is, this is the vector in B. Let me just say that, let's just say that this is our domain basis. I mean, the basis action in, in the standard basis is just going to be um, when you put in 1, 0, it'll be 1, 3, and then you put in 0, 1, it will be 2, 4. 
So it must be the columns, one, three, or two, four. So I can get the basis action and the standard basis, but let's say I needed it in some other basis, like this basis here. Well, now this is in. This is a representation. This is a representation of these two basis factors and basis B, but they're in the standard basis. So what I could do this if I took, if I want to know what M is, what the what the matrix is between B and the standard basis. Well, that's going to be three seven minus one minus one because the matrix of a map is given by the action on um, the basis elements. Okay? So these are the two basis elements, and I'm taking the image as the first column and the second column. But this is the matrix that takes you from vectors in basis B to vectors in the standard basis. If I wanted to, if I wanted to find the representation. So every, every matrix has lots of maps, depending on what basis you choose for the domain and codomain. And so we have, we have this initial representation we take to be from standard basis to standard basis. And this is what we have there. And then we can give another basis B, and we can specify the vector, the basis vectors for basis B. We've given them in the standard basis, so I find the image, and so the image is in the standard basis here. I know this can be a little bit subtle if you're not really paying attention or if you sort of you need to think through what's going on here. Now there's another, so there's another, um, uh, this is uh, the representation, represent of M in the basis B for the domain and standard basis for the codomain. I could then, if I wanted to find, say, basis B also for the codomain, then what I could do is I could take this basis action three seven, but I have to arrange that in, I have to find what it's represent, how it was, um, I have to represent this vector in that basis, and I have to do, so then that would correspond to uh, a linear system, one, 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 minus one, three, seven, so I would do minus row one plus row two, to get one, one, three, and then zero, um, minus two, and four, because minus three plus seven is four. So this is then gonna be um, A and B. So B has to equal minus two, because minus two times minus two is four, and a plus B, this is the first equation, we're doing back substitution, has to equal three. Well, if B is minus two, then A has to be five, because five plus minus two is three. So therefore, um, this vector three seven is equal to five minus two in basis B. And then we have to do the same thing with the other basis vector, one minus one, which is taken by the map to um, minus one minus one, which we have to then write in um, like that. Let's make it, okay. And then this is this corresponds to linear system one 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 minus one minus one minus one. And we do the same thing, minus row one plus row two to get one one minus one and then zero minus two and zero. 
so then, then clearly B equals zero here. So therefore A equals minus one because A plus B has to equal minus one. So therefore, this vector equals minus one zero in the basis B. So if we want to know what's the map from B to B, the representation of the map where I take vectors and basis B and I send them to vectors and basis B, but it's the same map. It maps vectors to vectors. But the first one's going to be uh, 5 minus 2 and then minus 1, 0. And so we have three different, we have one map, but many, many matrix representations of that map depending on which basis, basis we choose. Because we have this one, we have this one, we have this one. Now the properties of all these matrices, they're all going to have the same rank because they're the same map. They're all going to have the same range space and null space. They'll be represented differently, but we can use any of them to um, we can use any of them to um, you know, find out those properties. Okay, so this sort of is what we did last time. We looked at um, basis actions and give, given given a map. So you can start with a matrix, find the map, then find a basis action, and then choose different bases and find different matrix representations. And that's what we did last time. So let's go back and take this first matrix, one, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four, and ask, well, what is, what is the um, um, range space? Okay, that's the thing we asked with the map. Well, let me just, we can see from the map here, that, that um, x, y is taken to x plus two y, 3x plus 4y, right? So the range space is going to be all of these things. Well, the way we've done it before is we've said, okay, the, um, how do I, let's say the range space is going to be, if we sort this out, it's going to be x times 1, 3 plus y times 2, 4, such that x and y is a member of r. Now, what I do is I say it's the sum of all these things, then I divide this into 2, the sum of, of x, 3x, and 2y, 4y, the sum, and then I pull out the x from the first one, the y from the second one. Okay? But look, what, what's happening is the columns of the matrix are just... So if I look at this matrix, I can just say, well, the, the column space, so column space is range space. Okay? So if I want to find the rank, I, mean, I can look here and see these two vectors are not proportional, so the rank here, the, uh, the rank of the map, No, that's the range space. The rank of the map equals two because that's the dimension of the space. Well, that's the same thing as asking what's the dimension, what's the rank of the matrix, what's the rank of this this uh, space here. Well, there's two things. One is if we wanted to find the range space, we can just take these columns. But since the 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 rank of the column space is equal to the rank of the row space. All we need to do to find the rank of the map is to find the rank of the matrix. We can do that by just using Gauss's method to put it into echelon form. Minus three row one plus row two, one, two, zero, and minus three times two is minus six, plus two is minus two. So you see the rank is two because both both um, 
the rank is the number of uh, least in echelon form. Is the number rank is the number of um, you see in echelon form rank is number of non zero rows. That's because well each of these rows, in other words, when I did when I took the row space here, Gauss's method doesn't change the span. So the span of these rows is the same as the span of these rows. But echelon form puts them, makes them linearly independent. So the row the non-zero rows of non-zero rows of the matrix in echelon form span span the space and have um, a linear independence the form of basis. So the basis what they do is make a makes a basis out of row space. So therefore that gives me the row rank and the row rank is the column rank. So because the rank of this matrix is two, I know the rank of any map that represent if I if I find what the map is that this matrix represents, then the rank of any any of those matrices and this map is two. Okay, so that enables me to, and then I know if the, if the rank is the same, uh, so once I know this, I know the rank equals two, then I know any of those maps, because the rank equals the dimension of the codomain, M is on two. So I know that given this matrix, this calculation, I know that the rank is two, therefore the map is on two because that's the same as the dimension of the codomain. Okay, well that gives me everything about sort of one of the pieces and the other one you want is the, um, is the null space. Well, what is the null space? Well, the null space is all of these things that are mapped to zero. Well, that's what we did, up, we did up here. We take this and set this to zero, and then expand this as, you know, we'd find what that would give us a linear system, but that linear system is just um, this linear system, which we can then write as one, two, three, four, zero, zero, and it's going to be the same minus three row one plus row two. And we have one, two, zero, and zero minus minus two and zero. So therefore, um, this one says that y equals zero, and then this one says that x equals zero. So no space is just the zero vector, the zero space. Therefore. The nullity equals zero, and that means that, that the map is one to one. So, if so, any matrix, so any map that this matrix represents is going to be one to one and onto. It's going to have nullity zero, and zero plus two is two. So you can find out from the matrix, you can find out everything about the map that might be represented. By it. Or if you find the map and you want to just find, you can find the matrix and then find everything out from the matrix, that gives you a, um, you know. Now, one other thing you can do is let's say up here we saw that this was linearly independent, but let's say that you didn't know that these two vectors were linearly independent and you wanted to have a basis for, for range space that was. A basis. In other words, here we can just see these are limiting independent. How would you know that? Well, we would take one, two, three, and four, and then we would we want a basis for columns. So the simplest way to do that is to transpose it to look at M transpose, which exchanges rows and columns, right? So the first row becomes the first column. And the second row becomes the second column. So now, so, so, so the first column here 
is the first row and the second column is the second row. Now, if we, if we then use Gauss's method on this, that will find the basis. So this would be minus two row one plus row two, one, three, one, zero, two, and then minus two is minus six is minus two. Okay. Well, that's the that's the echelon form of the transpose. Now, if we want the basis, we transpose back to get uh, one, three, zero, minus two, and that means that that uh, range space is equal to x one three plus y zero minus two, such that x and y are any real numbers. I don't have to use x and y here, I could use anything. But the point is these two vectors are linearly independent and they span the same space. So that so this gives you um, a, it ensures you have a basis for a range space. Now if there was a linearly dependent vector, this would be a mechanical way to just get that basis and eliminate. Before we just said, okay, well, one of them is linearly independent. You can sort of toss one out. But this gives you a mechanical way to just use Gauss's method to find a basis for range space without having to um, guess. It's just like you can put this on a computer. You could, you, could, you could sort of ask these questions with a matrix, and then if you have Gauss's method, you can answer them all in a computer program by using. Um, to find out about any map by, do, by doing this. You could actually take a map, find the basis section, find the matrix, and then use the matrix to find all the properties of the map, whether it was one and one onto, and what range space was, and what null space was. So that way you, you could do everything. With, anyway, so that's one of the advantages of representing um, the mechanical, uh, algorithmic way of evaluating all the properties of maps but then also, the disadvantage is that each matrix is only the representation of the map in one basis. Whereas you can go and find the representation in different bases. So, for example, this map here is, is, is the map, but it's sort of the map represented, it's still got this sort of, you know, standard basis form to it. And I could use one of these other matrices up here, like this one, or this one, and multiply it by an x, y in basis b, and I'd get a different formula, because that would be the formula for the map in from basis b to e. So, so that the there's there's a map that's like the vectors sort of have an independent existence apart from their bases. And the map has an independent existence from the bases, but all we see are representations of it. But underneath, there's something that doesn't change. Now, that whole situation is exploited in physics because physical quantities don't depend on bases. And the bases in physics are your coordinate systems that you use to um, measure things in. But your velocity, your force, your acceleration, well, at least your force and acceleration, these quantities are, well, yeah, the, all of them, they don't depend on the coordinate system that you evaluated in. So if you think of them as vectors in a vector space, they, and if you had a map that maps them, those things have an independent existence that are independent bases. And this whole technology here enables you to sort of understand and get at that and go between different bases. Okay, so that's the that's the story. For, I think that I think this one thing takes you um, between all those different things. I'm gonna.